So how do you get more done in less time in medical school? It's exactly what we'll cover in this episode. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome to the MD Journey, a channel completely dedicated to helping you succeed in your medical journey with less stress. My name is Lux. I'm an internal medicine physician and resident in training. And here on the channel, in case you're new, we make videos on how to study, how to be more productive like this one, as well as other things, talking about clinical rotations and residency, you name it. And so if you're new here, definitely consider hitting that like and subscribe button. But in this episode, I want to share with you how to get more done in less time in medical school. And specifically, I want to share with you a technique that I use personally as a student that I share with other students that I work with, as well as to the members in the MedElite Academy. I'll be linked down below in case you guys are interested. Basically sharing with you how do you get more done uh, without having this overwhelming day that's eight to 10 hour day that's fairly typical in medical school. And I really don't want to like make it too fluffy. I just want to get into it. And I like things to be very visual personally for me, because sometimes I feel like things are adding value to my life and I'm doing things. And then when the test comes around or the project comes around or whatever the deadline is, I realize that the X amount of time that I spent on it really wasn't valuable. And obviously you want to be making sure that everything you're doing for your studying, for your prep, for residency, for your rotations are all really just worth your time. And so as you guys can see, I have basically a med school efficiency worksheet. Um, that is included in the MetaLite Academy. So again, that'll be linked down below. But basically what you'll be doing is you have different tasks that you'll be doing throughout the day. And so this is an example. Let's say you're a first or second year medical student and you're basically going to choose all the different tasks and activities you're gonna be doing that day. Um, so like reading your syllabus chapters, watching some lectures, maybe you have some practice questions that you wanna do, as well as some personal things. Maybe you wanna get a gym workout, do a group study session. Maybe there's some online office hours and then in the era of COVID, um, for one of your professors. Um, and maybe there's a side project, like a research project that you're working on. So lots of stuff you have going on. You want to make sure you get as much done to look productive as possible. Now, the first thing that I do is I estimate in hours roughly how many time or how much time it's going to take me. So, you know, your syllabus lecture may take me about three hours to read, lectures uh, one and two. I may be able to watch them at one and a half X speed. So maybe I can just do it in, you know, one, one and a half hours. Uh, and then so on. So you're going to be able to assign uh, a specific time to each of your activities. And you can do this on a spreadsheet. You can do this on an actual notebook or a scratch piece of paper. The next thing that's probably the most important is you want to pick the value that that task is giving you on uh, a prior experience basis. So how much value does reading the syllabus give you from your prior tests and prior quizzes? Personally, I'd probably say in this example, you know, not very much. Five is the highest, one is the lowest. So two means that it's not really helpful. Um, and then you kind of do the same thing for the rest of your tasks. Once you do, you'll basically be able to get an impact value. So impact value, basically the higher, the better, meaning you're getting more value for less time. Um, and ideally those are the tasks that we should be spending most of our time on. So as you guys can see here in the scenario, we have the practice quiz questions is probably the most important thing we have followed actually our gym work out, excuse me, was the most uh, impact value that we personally considered. Um, and then followed by our practice quiz questions. And then we have a tie uh, between listening to our lectures, going to the online office hours or group study sessions. Now you're going to do this throughout your tests um, and you can make this more granular. So instead of a one out of five, you can choose one out of 10 in case you want to just know what to work on. But the next thing you want to do is once you know what activities are going to be your highest value task without requiring the most amount of time, you want to sort them in order. So the most important thing I'm going to do today is get my gym workout in and then I have to do some practice quiz questions and then it's a tie, right? So then you get to pick on what the most important thing is. Well, let's just say, you know, I'd rather do the group study session or I want to listen to lecture one and two. Um, you pick the preference that you want. I try to keep the tasks that I do in a day minimal because while it's nice to try to get seven things done in a day, most of us probably won't get past number three anyways. And so if you pick your first three tasks that are most valuable, but also the most efficient for you in terms of how long they'll take, you'll have a lot more free time. So in case you do want to get something else done, that's number four or five or six down your list, you can, but these are going to give you the highest bang for your buck. I know that was a very quick overview, but I really want to take this now to share with you some advantages of this tactic. One, as you do this more and more, you're going to start adding the tasks that you repeatedly have to do. So the next day it's going to be, you know, chapter 
maybe through 10 or something, and you're instead of going to say, well, maybe I can do it in two and a half hours, but it's still a value too. You start to get into the same scenario where you find a specific category of a task is not very effective for you. So you find that reading the syllabus isn't found to be very impactful to you based on how you're grading it. So maybe it should be something that you take out of your daily planning and instead of replace it with something else. Maybe you can do more practice quiz questions or listen to the lectures if you find that to be helpful. So this is really a personalized way of identifying this is what works and this is what I need to only add to my daily task list. And so ideally over time, what you find is a specific task is no longer going to be included into your daily schedule because you find that it never really makes it into your top three, which means that it's probably not that important. So you can start taking it away off of your daily list completely and then dedicate more time to the things like working out or doing practice questions um, into your daily routine. Now, a lot of times when I work with students, they may ask, well, I'm not really sure what's a one, what's a five personally. I think everything works. And so, you know, I'm spending eight to nine hours and this doesn't really work for me because I'm gonna give everything a four, or everything a five. Well, one thing you could do is you can use this daily tracker, which basically the way it's gonna be designed is you're gonna choose or kind of reflect on the different things you did that day. So maybe you read syllabus reading and maybe you listen to lectures uh, maybe you did a practice quiz, maybe you worked out, uh, maybe you grocery shopped, you know, personal as well as educational. Uh, maybe you uh, started using your resource. And then similarly, you're gonna add how much time you spent doing it. So say I spent two hours reading the, the syllabus, three hours watching the lectures, one hour doing the practice quiz, about an hour working out today, it took me an hour to shop, and I spent about an hour and a half using this new resource. Now syllabus for me, still not that valuable. It's a two, listening to lectures. Today's lectures were pretty good, so I enjoyed a practice quiz. I found it to be pretty effective working out. I love grocery shopping, not so much. I'm gonna give it a two. A new resource, you know, it was good, but I realized like in hindsight, it wasn't that helpful. So I'm gonna give it a two. So again, you start to get an idea of what type of things you could then take out for Tuesday and then take out for Wednesday and take out for Thursday. And as you go on, the only things that tend to stay left in your schedule are some things that are pretty low impact that you have to do anyways, like some clerical work or chores. But then in terms of your value, you start to do more of the things like practice quizzes and working out that you found to be effective. And so this guys is a very simple tactic that you can use to help you become more efficient, do more at medical school without really changing much of your routine, just kind of identifying where your weak and kind of limiting factors are and doing more of what works. And I really enjoy this Excel kind of document to help kind of visualize that. So if you want access to the spreadsheet, it actually will be included for people on the MetaLead Academy. And if you're not a member of the MetaLead Academy, no worries at all. In case you are interested, then you can actually check out the whole platform, which includes step-by-step -step courses and our whole content library, as well as resources like this one, as well as guides, as well as Q and A's with me and our community forum. You can access to all of that and you can actually check it out for an entire week just for a buck. And if you are a member already of the MetaLead Academy, you'll find this resource as well as all our videos and modules on how to be more productive in medical school on the platform. But with that being said, guys, hopefully you really enjoyed this video. I like to include those quick wins, things you can just do immediately after watching the video and just apply into your own medical school career. Um, so hopefully this makes you find the time where you're wasting as well as the times that are really valuable and you want to keep. Uh, but if you have any more questions about this method or another method in general, just go ahead and add it in the comment section down below. And before you click off, definitely consider hitting that like and subscribe button to support the channel. If you're listening to this on the podcast, definitely consider leaving an honest review on iTunes to support us there on the podcast platform. Uh, but I really do appreciate all of you guys making it to the very end of this video. Super gracious for you being a part of this community. Hopefully I've been a little help to you on your journey. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys on your journey pretty soon. Talk to you guys later. Peace.